As we begin a new year, IT leaders are looking ahead to ensure their businesses are prepared for the future. They're continuing to focus their efforts on leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning to help deliver better employee experiences, improve operational efficiencies, and provide insights for faster data-driven decision-making. I'm Jim Stratton, Workday's Chief Technology Officer, and today I'm joined by Ernesto Boada, Workday's Interim CIO, and Heather Gardner, Vice President of Information Systems at Workday. We'll be discussing our future predictions and trends for IT leaders and how they can best prepare for them. Welcome to both of you. Let's get started. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. So obviously there's, there's a lot going on in the current macroeconomic environment, a lot of change, a lot of pressures, stresses on, on businesses and IT leaders in particular. So Ernesto, can you tell us what are some of the major trends that you see in terms of how IT leaders are, are investing to prepare for that? Sure. I mean, I think I will probably divide it in three main buckets. One is the technology investments, the employee experience, and as you were mentioning earlier, artificial intelligence and machine learning. I think it's key right now for, for companies and CIOs primarily to have a strong resiliency and agility to react to everything that might be coming um, in the next year or so, right? As the economy continues slowing down uh, or softening, um, the higher demand for technology is happening all the time. So I think there are Talking back to technology investments, it's very important for us to start looking into truly what do we need to invest? What are the right strategic investments that will produce good results for this resiliency and, uh, and uh, agility? It is important as well to look into kind of what is, uh, what do we have in our ecosystem and, and start looking into consolidation, simplification, right? I mean, there's a big proliferation of applications around there. I mean, we went through many years where new things were popping up, it's easy to download, it's easy to use, but we wanna make sure that our employees are able to do their work better by using the right tools. And for us, it's, it's easier to support bigger platforms, things that we can truly go across, and instead of hundreds of tiny systems that we don't know how to integrate and connect. One more thing to consider uh, at this point is kind of a platform consolidation, right? Uh, it is time for us to also take a, a good or leverage our, our SaaS providers, right? Uh, companies that are already in, in, uh, in, in the business that can help us instead of us focusing on a particular set of items, we can rely on them to provide the right solution. As we continue talking about how do we kind of uh, reduce the amount of other applications and proliferation of systems that we're not using. I think so, so the platform consolidation will give us a, a much more stability and resiliency as we we're talking about, but as well is going to simplify the, the, the way our employees are going to be able to use them. So I think it's key for us to, to look into that consolidation and again, I'm repeating myself, but relying on our, um, our SaaS providers. Yeah, it's a really interesting point. I think you're right. It's about getting more leverage out of those strategic SaaS providers to, to simplify the overall ecosystem that, a, that an IT leader is is having to manage. And what, one other point that, that we're all working through and, and I think is gonna continue to be a, a focus for all IT leaders is, is really around retaining top talent too. Mm -hmm. So Heather, maybe you could tell us what we're doing here at Workday, both both as a business, but also within the product to, to retain top talent. Absolutely, so um, for a while now, we've had a heavy focus on skills at Workday. It's kind of like the heart and center of everything we do. And what's so cool about that is it really unlocks the potential to understand um, and enable mo mobility around the company. So if um, historically, you know, someone was in an area, they might not realize that there was an opportunity to use those skills in a different way across the company. So from a product perspective, um, we leverage our skills hub. Um, we have a um, kind of an inventory of skills and people track them on their profile and workday. And then what that is the foundation for is we're able to identify, hey, there might be a, a gig opportunity. Actually, I've done a gig and it turned into a full-time job. Um, and so, you know, stretching out and having those heat experiences in your career as a result of skills that are matched with machine learning to different gigs that we post around the organization. I think what's also cool is you can use it kind of to track and um, establish a plan for your career progression. So if I want to develop a certain skill because I have, I want to be the next CIO or something like that, I can kind of create a plan for myself. And then using machine learning, we identify learning courses, we identify gigs and kind of scaffold your development within the application using a combination of skills and machine learning. 
Yeah, that's that's great, and and all of that leverages our skills graph, right? Which right. which started as just a, a ontology of skills and the relationships between those skills, and then through again machine learning, as you said, we've enriched that ontology, embedded learning courses, embedded jobs, embedded other types of of content within the work environment into that that allow us then to proliferate all of these applications on top of it to help enhance career mobility, enhance the individual, open up opportunities that, that they may not have known before, all, all based on skills. Yeah, and why I think it's so critical now, I mean, it's always been important to have skills to enable more opportunities, but um, organizations are having to be more effective and mindful of how they use their talent. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about when you're consolidating your platforms and who do you have to maybe leverage to support that consolidation, um, the combination of skills and our applications enables organizations to do that really effectively today. Yeah, that's great. And it's very interesting because um, definitely going back to the, the theme of change, right? We're now seeing employee differently. We're going to support employee different through skills, right? I mean, this is definitely a way of us working with employees in a completely different new world, right? And this is part as well where not only using the skills and the technology that we have out there to, to help uh, people to get new gigs mm -hmm. or, or influence all areas, we need to also provide the right technology, right? So we're definitely changing on, on how do we work with employees across in the entire journey. And, um, but that actually brings me to the next topic, which is, which is what we talk about employee experience is like, well, help the support of the career, the growth, but also how can we support to, for them to do the right job and the work, right work actually, right? And, and how can we use technology for them to probably close the gap of these different ways of working, right? If you're working from home, if you're even a hybrid situation or you're working from the office, how can we make sure that everybody is relevant uh, all the time, that they can contribute to different situations, that they can have the right productivity and the right technology or collaboration tools for them to do the work regardless of where they are, regardless of the topics, and, and give those opportunities for employees to continue evolving. So I think from, for CIOs and for companies, it's very important uh, to look right now how we can improve that experience for employee. I mean, we say here at Workday that if we have happy employees, we'll be happy customers. So it's very important for us to double, double click on that as well. You know what's really interesting? I don't know if you both saw at Rising, they were talking a lot about stuff on employee experience, specifically um, something that we're rolling out called Empower. And what I think is really cool about that, and again, like during this time, I mean, managers have a really tough job, right? I mean, you're trying to figure out uh, the right talent, you're consolidating your systems, you're moving people in the right places and being more effective than you probably um, might have needed to be in the past. And so with Empower, what we're focusing on is really making sure those managers are supported um, and automating a lot of those tasks. Think of like changing jobs, just removing some of the steps that you have to take so that you can be more more nimble and kind of shift your focus to your employees, helping grow their career and making sure people are in the right places to drive business value. And I'll add that that as well that is pretty interesting that we're, we're, we're using is meeting the employees where they are, yeah. right? Uh, deliver whatever thing they need to do, if it is a request, if it is a question or anything that they need at the time they're doing their job, it might be somebody in the field, a driver, and, and the person needs to do something immediately, well, they have a handheld with them, right? So how can we meet all our employees where they are? And I think, again, Workday has a great product as well. Yeah, we're Workday trying everywhere. to focusing on, exactly. So this is what we're trying to be, to be really nimble on how do we connect with the employee where they are. So it's interesting. Um, I was just at an event last week where there was a bunch of CFOs and um, and the topic was really about kind of disemployee experience. And so we shared, you know, we have PCON, which is a survey tool that we use. And we have this um, three-step process, like you listen, you act, and you analyze. And so we're listening to the data and understanding what our employee experience is across different segments of our population. And then taking action, maybe that is using um, journeys in our system to target different populations so that we can help improve their experience and then analyze the data after that um, using a lot of our analytics. So I think that three-step process really, it's, and it's a continuous process, helps us to really keep a pulse on the experience of employees, um, different parts of the organization, because that, as we know with COVID, that can change really drastically. Um, and so it's important to kind of make those little incremental changes um, constantly through that experience. And I think, you know, I'll just throw in one more thing. Um, 
I think another important part of that experience, and you kind of touched on it, is like making that job easier for them with the tools that they have. And I think we have internally in our finance application used a combination of Extend, machine learning, Prism from an analytics perspective um, to kind of increase that anomaly detection. So things that people were doing that took a lot of time before um, and doing that actually more effectively and efficiently so that they can have a better experience because they're focused on more strategic things, right? They're helping to drive the business value, which is, again, going back to the macroeconomic conditions, so critical in this moment. Yep, that's a great point. So Jim, we touched on two of the three buckets that I mentioned at the beginning of the conversation. So I would love to hear a bit more about artificial intelligence and machine learning. Sure, I'll, I'll talk a bit about maybe how we're doing it at Workday that that I think is different than than other uh, other companies out there. So we are we're all so used to AI ML based applications in the consumer world. So pull out your phone, interact with any app on it. Uh, that your interactions with that, how you search for things, the overall user experience of it, it's all powered by, by machine learning on the back end, and we're just used to that. And we're not used to that in the enterprise space yet. And I, I think that's that's something that's really different about the approach of, of how we've taken it. There's, there's two sides to it. One is we've taken an approach much like how we develop the rest of our applications of building a, a leveraged platform approach to it. So doing a lot of the back end data pipelines and observability and metrics and and feature stores and all the things that we need to do for the backend engineering side of the repeatability of being able to build a, a lot of machine learning based features and applications within that space. And then now, as, as we talked about before on, you know, skills graph as, as an example of that and, and the proliferation of applications that we can do on top of that, that's how we get that, that leveraged approach out of it. Uh, out of out of how we develop machine learning based applications, but explainability I think is a is a big part of it as well. So in again in the, in the consumer space we're just used to it, in the enterprise space we're not. And so how do we get end users over the line of actually trusting that the application behind it, the suggestions that it's making, the recommendations that it's making, that it's making good recommendations, and to trust the application and what's suggested to them. And I think explainability is the way that we'll, that we'll have to bridge that gap of saying, here's a recommendation that I made for you, but here's why I made that recommendation. Here are the features that actually drove this particular job recommendation, or I think these skills are relevant to you, or here's why I match these two payments together. Having the machine explain here's why, I think that's going to be a, a huge, uh, hugely important piece of how we bridge that trust gap within the enterprise. We had a lot of really interesting topics today. Um, I'm curious, Jim, if you could leave IT leaders with one piece of advice heading into the new year, what would it be? I think the piece of advice I would, I would leave IT leaders with is the challenges are going to continue. The macroeconomic environment, the labor market, it's its gonna be difficult to continue to navigate uh, uh, through, through all this challenging environment. Focusing on where you get your best return for your investments, simplification of what you're doing to focus on those business needs of what you're, what you're trying to accomplish as a business, using that as a, as a tool to focus on where you put your investments. I think that's probably the best advice for IT leaders going forward. Awesome. Nesto, what are your Excellent. thoughts? Excellent. Well, I mean, I think when we have these times of uncertainty and, and um, is is great to be able to start thinking and change. And it, this is where probably when, when, when we have these moments that we probably get the best work of our lives as well. And as a, as, a, as a CIOs, I think we have a lot to do now and great opportunities as we mentioned earlier is truly how do we support companies to be really resilient in this situation. And, and as I said earlier, being agile, we need to be able to move fast. We need to be able to, to support whatever the company has to do. And one of the things, again, going back to artificial intelligence and machine learning is, is um, when we have uncertainty, we need to have as much data to be able to make the right decisions. Right, and and we again simplify the 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 life of our employees is going to bring a lot of great value to our company. So I think for CIOs and others is focusing on technology and how can we definitely support our companies. It is going to be difficult year perhaps, but it's going to be a very interesting, and we we'll look forward to to everything that is coming up. Well, this has been a great conversation. I've really appreciated having both of you here. Um, thank you, Heather, for, for joining us today. Thank you, so Ernesto, as thank always, you. For, for joining us. And thank you to our viewers for watching. Have a great workday.